Carolus Linnaeus is famous for his work in taxonomy, the science of identifying, naming, and classifying organisms, plants, bacteria, etc. He was born in 1707. Linnaeus' thoughts on evolution are very different from the modern day theories. He believed that species were immutable, means species can't change. Now he was wrong about this. He, he would say if there are 30 different kinds of sparrows, then God made 30 different kinds of sparrows. He went overboard in that regard. God might have made two sparrows, and Noah might have had two sparrows on the ark, and they've now diversified to 30 varieties of sparrows, but they're still a sparrow. And a sparrow is still a dinosaur. I'll explain. There are 35 species of sparrow just in North America, but they're a family-level taxon that is distributed globally. The passerid family, like the corvid family of ravens and crows and so on, are in the order Passeriformes, which, as you can see here, are a sister clade to parrots and raptors, also known as birds of prey. This is from the old Arizona Tree of Life project. I'd rather show screenshots from my own phylogeny explorer project, but that's intended primarily for scientists and is consequently much too detailed for the baby steps I have to illustrate for you and your followers in this debate. Collectively, these so-called land birds are all neo-aves, which is actually a larger clade shown here. I'm leaving out an awful lot in every category, just to keep it simple. But bear in mind that each of these clades consists of many different families, each with multiple genera divided into numerous species. So we're talking about quite a lot more birds here than it looks. Neo-aves are a sister clade to Gallo and Sari, which includes galliforms, which is the order of turkeys, chickens, and other game fowl, and Anseriforms, which is the order of ducks, geese, swans, and so on. And all of these, so far, are known as neonates, new birds, which is a sister clade to paleonates, primitive birds like emus, ostriches, kiwis and tinimus. Now they're called primitive birds because they retain so many primitive traits that they still look like what we typically think of as dinosaurs. Neonates did not come from paleonates. They're both nested in the same parent clade, neorneths, along with several clades of fossil birds that are even more primitive, like ichthyornis, hesperornis, enantiornis, confususornis, and so on. Now some of these still have dinosaur features like teeth and long tails and grasping fingers in their wings until we come to things like Rahon Avis, which looks more like a flying dinosaur than it does a bird. Notice the sickle claw, like Deinonychus or Velociraptor has? That's because this is the same thing. Not just the claw, but the whole skeleton. This is a Velociraptor that flies. We now know that all Manoraptor and dinosaurs were fully feathered. This is how Disney depicted Oviraptor back in Y2K. But it actually looked more like this. And this is what Velociraptor really looked like, not those naked reptiles in Jurassic Park. That's why all aves are classified as a subset of Silurosaurus, itself a subset of theropod dinosaurs. Just as not all birds are ducks, but all ducks are birds, so it is true that not all dinosaurs are birds, but all birds are dinosaurs. In fact, there's a collection of non-avian dinosaurs called paraaves, most of which still have long tails, teeth, and wing fingers. They are still definitely dinosaurs, but they are so bird-like that any five-year-old would tell you, that's a bird. And grown-ups are just as confused. Look at Caudipteryx zooey, for example. Can you tell the difference? Which is it? Is this a bird or is this a dinosaur? Even the experts can't tell for sure, seriously. But they figured out that whether it is a bird or not, it's still definitely a dinosaur either way. So birds are a new kind of dinosaur. <coughs> but it's still a dinosaur, sir. It didn't turn into something else. Okay. <laughs>